Everyone, this is Ross, and so far this season, we've been doing a really nice job of documenting all the different things that I'm growing. Um, you know, either tasting them, talking about how we grow it. Um, you know, I just want to take this time to explain to you guys kind of how awesome it is to grow food in your backyard at home. It's just you just get an overwhelming sense of pride, um, number one. I mean, number two, you can't really get this stuff. And number three, it's all so tasty. It's nutritious. I mean, it looks beautiful. Uh, everything about it just blows me away. And every day that goes by, I get upset because every day I learn something new that I had missed out on for most of my life. Um, growing food at home is a privilege and not everyone has this privilege and I think a lot of people don't even really realize what a privilege it really is. Uh, we eat just crap guys at the store at least in the United States. Um, what you can see behind me is an, is an apricot tree. We just put this one in the ground and it fruited for us and a couple weeks ago we did a video just showing you guys the fruit talking a little bit about growing them and I was blown away this was my first apricot that we got to try off of this tree um, or off of any apricot tree that I have and now there's a second one down here this is a different variety this one's called um, Tomcot really beautiful beautiful blush that this apricot has it was about right here that it was hanging getting hit by the sun for most of the day. I mean, it is just a wonderful piece of fruit. In fact, I knew it was ready because the thing fell on the ground. And that's kind of what these apricots do is that if you let them go, it seems like they just fall off. Some will fall off into the bag and the bag will support it or they'll just fall to the ground. And you can see there's no bruises. It looks great. Um, and this is when we know it's really ready because at the store, they pick them a bit earlier when they're more firm. Let them soften up on your counter, but they just don't have that sugar content. Um, they don't have that bricks and they certainly don't have that flavor. Sorry for the shakiness there, guys. But I wanna eat this with you. Hmm. <laughs> Alright. It's too good. That's absolutely too good. It has that dried apricot flavor that you wouldn't expect from an apricot, from a fresh apricot, but it's just so intense. And you got that sweetness so juicy. Really just makes it something. And look at this. Look at that pit, guys. I can almost wiggle the whole pit at, oh, there it goes. That is something special, guys. This is a real piece of fruit. Oh, man. Okay. Here's something else I want to show you guys. There's a literal pool of nectar in here. Just like in my figs, a lot of fruits produce their own nectar. You can sometimes, with figs, you can see it dripping from the eye. I've seen it in grapes. I've seen it in melons. That is so, so good. The sweetness coming from this apricot, you just will not, you won't believe it. Oh man, that is so good. Mmm. Mmm. Now, I want to keep going in this video, but I want to, <laughs> I really want to enjoy that. Um, next, I want to show you guys, though, a different fruit. Something we've been raving about now for a couple weeks because it's been doing really well. And surprisingly, the fruit wasn't half bad either. And this is what is called a gumi. And we've been talking a lot about these. We've done a couple videos now on them. And let me show you guys the plant real quick. Go over there and check that out. But 
The gumi is a quite astringent fruit when picked under ripe, but I like that. It's pleasant. It gives you a different feeling in your mouth, and it's quickly uh, gone away uh, by the instant burst of flavor, fruitiness, fruit punch, juice that comes out of these little red berries. And um, this is the bush right here. It really does quite well here in this climate. And it was loaded. Uh, but I took some off of the bush and put them inside to let them sit on the counter because I wanted them to dry up. And I could have put it in a dehydrator. I also could have left it on the bush. They dry on the plant. But I noticed that some birds had got at these things and they had pecked some and then the interior actually dried up after they had pecked and pierced the flesh. Um, and then I got to taste that and it was like eating a gummy bear. Uh, pretty much exact to a gummy bear, but good for us and, and natural. And they say that's what, that's why it's named Gumi is because it tastes like a gummy bear. It's absolutely true. I didn't, I totally forgot about that, but now that it's coming back to me, um, it makes total sense. I mean, they weren't kidding. So I'm going to bite into this now. This thing is... Wow. Now that was interesting because there was still some water in it. It wasn't totally dry. But that thing had the most interesting, <laughs> it's like a different fruit every time you eat it. It's also a different fruit depending on when you pick it. If you pick it quite underripe, it's quite astringent. Let it hang on the plant, it really starts to sweeten up. The astringency starts to go away. That was incredible. I don't even know, that one had a totally different flavor. And what else is pretty interesting is actually this berry right here. This is a bush called the gooseberry. And you can see down underneath here, I've got the net kind of over top, but also around the bottom of the plant because the birds love these gooseberries. And they're at the bottom of the branches, hanging down. This is a variety called uh, Hinomaki Red that actually gets quite red. And I'm picking these actually a little early. But they are so flavorful, just like this that it almost doesn't even matter. Let me pop one in my mouth. It's really like eating a grape. You burst through that tough skin on the exterior and it's like a huge explosion of flavor in your mouth. It's, it's tart, it's sweet, it's berry, it's got some com complexity to it. But overall, it's pretty smooth and it's overall Really similar to a grape is what I like to compare these to. This is a very popular fruit um, in Europe. And you know what? I can see why. They're really good. Easy to grow. Easy to multiply. Nothing bothers them except for the birds. And this is what I would consider to be probably round one of the grapes. This is not a grape technically, but... What will be next is actually the European grape because the gooseberry ripens sometime in late June to mid-August. And then we can go over here to the European grapes sometime in August. And look at these clusters of grapes, guys. And these will be ready. Rot-free this year. And then followed up by that is the muscadine grape. And we're growing muscadine grapes for quite a few years now, but we've finally got some in the ground. And you can see the berries now starting to form or even starting to flower. But this is a fall grape. They ripen in the fall. Um, but you could pretty much have grapes all year round if you got these three different plants. And not only are they really good, better than the store, but they're also quite different and quite complex. Um, and it just makes growing fruit, honestly, a no-brainer. So for me, guys, um, I don't know what else to say. That's 
really why you should grow fruit at home. Those are three different fruits that, they're just so good. Especially that apricot, guys. Holy hell. All right. I think I had enough. I think you guys had enough. We'll see you for tomorrow's video. Uh, take care, everybody. Catch you later.